We are welcoming this morning um, a couple of folks that are going to be talking about the youth homelessness demonstration program here in Wisconsin for the balance of state continuum of care. And I'm just going to turn it over to them right away um, to Carrie and Lee and let them introduce themselves and take it from here. Awesome. Uh, can you see the screen? It's all good. Lee is nodding at me. So yep, life is yep, great. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Um, my name is Carrie Poser. I am the COC director for the Wisconsin Balance of State Continuum of Care. I'm going to do most of the very fast talking um, in our 30 minute window. Um, but I want Lee to get a chance to introduce uh, herself because she's really the point person for this project moving forward. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lee Paladna. I am the project coordinator for the Wisconsin Balance of State Continuum of Care. Um, and as Carrie said, she's going to be doing most of the talking, but I wanted to make sure that my face and, and that I introduced myself um, is out there so that in case um, there are ways that we can all partner together as you hear about this presentation and other presentations moving forward, um, you know who I am and that I may be uh, a part of those conversations and contacting you and that kind of stuff. So it's very wonderful to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Um... So I am. I have slides on the screen and they were sent. So I think that they're posted in whatever magical place that you all post your slides. Um, I am also going to be joining you and I believe it's next week um, for the lunchtime live. Um, and so I think we'll have a little bit more time to be able to answer questions and talk a little bit more about um, a couple of parts of this presentation. So I'm going to treat this as kind of an overview, but if you're really excited about this and you want to learn more, then that's my plug for, I believe it's next week um, during the lunchtime live. Okay, uh, moving right along. So the balance of state continuum of care, if you've never heard of it before, in a nutshell, it is everything in Wisconsin except Dane, Milwaukee, and Racine. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization that covers all the other territory. Um, the way that we make that work is by breaking down each of those pieces of geography into local homeless coalitions. So the map that you see on the slides, um, the different colors represent the different local coalitions. Each of those local coalitions have a whole list of things they're supposed to be working on and doing. Um, and then they funnel up to, to, to our larger organization. Um, with the purpose of ending homelessness, and there's one of the boxes on the slide that has our definition of ending homelessness, which means we don't want it to happen, but if it does have to happen, let's make it not happen very much and very short and not ever again. Um, when we talk about this endeavor, the YHDP project, um, most of the coalitions came along for the, for the ride um, as we undertook this process but not all of them. So we will talk a little bit about which coalitions chose not to move forward, um, which means that while they can still participate in certain ways, um, some of the funding was limited um, and not available to those communities. So YHDP is a big giant HUD thing. Um, it's a little bit different than the way that HUD does its normal things. So it threw out there um, several different times um, these opportunities to write an application that says, pick me, pick me. Not, I want X amount of dollars, but more like, please pick me and then we'll do whatever you ask and then we'll, you'll give us money. So um, we did that in July of 2021 and we were picked. So we were one of 33 in the country. The map on the screen shows you who has also been funded. Um, and when we were funded for YHDP, they decided based on whatever magical math, um, how much money we were gonna get. And so we were awarded $7.9 million over two years. Um, that is a pretty remarkable amount of money, not only just by itself, but in comparison to the other communities that received YHDP funds, it's the largest amount that any balance of state or large kind of or, or rural area um, had received. So a big part, again, I said this was different, right? So we write a, a grant, but didn't ask for money. We got a, picked, and then we were told we get some money. But um, before you get to do anything with the money, you have to write a plan. You have to come up with, basically, um, 
what it is that you need as it relates to youth and young adults experiencing homelessness in your community. Um, what, are, what are you working on now? Who are your partners? Who do you want your partners to be? What is your like organizational structure as how are you gonna address this? You have to have a youth action group or a group of young people that are making decisions throughout this process. And all of that needs to kind of go into this plan that you then submit to HUD and then HUD has to approve it. So what you see on the screen right now on the left side is our front page um, of our CCP, which is a quote from a real life YAB yeah, member. Um, and then on the right side is the link to the part of the page um, that has our plan. So our plan is giant. Um, it, it is really big and it covers a lot of information and a lot of material. And then there's an appendix, which is like four times the size of the actual plan. Because the way that we structured it is that the balance of state has some pretty lofty goals that they wanna do big and giant and statewide. Each coalition has some goals that they wanna accomplish as well. You know, things look different in some of our communities. They have different already existing relationships with people, including homeless liaisons. So as a result of that, each of those coalitions got to write their own little part um, of the plan, which we then included in the appendix. Uh, the other thing that's on the screen on the lower right side is a logo. So our very creative young people created their own logo for to represent themselves as the YAB. So we have the Balance of State logo in the upper right corner. We have the YAB logo um, on the lower right corner. When we submitted the plan, um, there's there was just a lot of moving parts throughout this whole planning process. And this was most of, well, the end of 2021 and for the most part, all of, no, the end of 2020 and all of 2021. Sorry, we moved very fast. Um, but the, the planning piece we had to submit in May of this year. And then we spent the summer kind of planning for the projects to get started. And most of those projects got started 12 days ago. So the pieces of this puzzle, um, the Youth Action Board, as I, as I mentioned, so those occur in two different places, both locally, and then they can send representatives to the big COC-wide YAB, which meets every Wednesday. Lee uh, facilitates, um, or at least is the representative from our COC that is on the call. Um, but the young people get to, at the COC level, they, they get to run the show. Like if they want to focus on a particular policy or if they want to review a certain thing or if they want, I think point in time methodology is on the docket. These are the things they have full reign to be able to do and make recommendations to our board um, that should be funneling up from the local coalitions. So why does that matter? Well, you all have access to and work with a whole lot of young people that could be participating, um, lending their voice, their talents, their, their thoughts about homelessness and lack of housing and barriers and all that stuff to these local groups. So each, there's 11 of them um, in different states of functioning right now, but um, we, we, have, we have help on the way. So, I say that because I really want you to take a moment to think about maybe between now and next week when I talk to you all again, um, if there's a way um, that we could help uh, basically recruit young people to, to join the local coalition, um, YABS, um, and to be able to share, like I said, their thoughts and expertise. They also get compensated for their time. Um, we pay 15 bucks an hour um, in order to, the balance of state, compensates for their time. So that's the thing. That's box number one. Box number two is the plan. Again, um, I encourage you to look at, check out the link. It's a lot of information. There is a lot of information in there specific about education and the role of homeless liaisons and school staff. Um, so I encourage that. Uh, and then on the far right side are the projects. So after our plan was approved, we ran an open competition for those communities, and that's what we came up with. Um, four or five housing projects, um, some, a drop-in center staffing project, a mobile outreach project, some diversion and outreach, and then we invested some money in coordinated entry specific for youth. And then we, as a balance of state, 
have a very large grant where we are able to um, fund uh, a, a system navigator in each of the coalitions. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I want to make sure I hit that. And that is going to be a big part of what we talk about next week. Uh, these are the four goal or five goals that drove our plan. Number three, you can see, is all about education and employment. Um, all of this that you're about to see now, all was approved by the COC app. So nothing got submitted to HUD that they didn't say was okay and represented where they wanted to go with this project. Um, this slide, which is big and giant, and I like snipped part of our goals. So this is goal number three, education and employment. You can see um, the five objectives and the ton of action steps underneath each of them. Um, you can see the word homeless liaison in a variety of places. Um, so homeless liaisons pop in here. Um, this section has to do with um, helping young people access higher education and partnering with higher education institutions. Uh, I sat in on one of your sessions yesterday, which was about um, young kids experiencing homelessness. Um, and so some of those connections have started to be made with the Head Start programs. Um, but that that's a piece of the puzzle. You can see here that we're talking about the system navigator, which I think is going to play a really critical role in supporting the work that you all do um, and be able to maybe take it a, a step further um, because we do and will have a dedicated staff person. Um, for most of the coalitions. Um, and then there's some employment stuff too. So I, I promised I would tell you who was included and who wasn't. So this is the map that shows who's included and who isn't. If it's blue, they were part of our um, process. If they are not blue, they are not part of our process. Um, again, if you are a homeless liaison, for example, in Appleton, and you see that Ottagamie County is not um, in blue, you are correct. Um, they chose not to move forward with the plan. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that if you have youth that might be interested in participating in a YAB or the COCYD YAB, we can still do that. We can still have you um, recruit youth or, and have youth participate. So just because it's not highlighted doesn't mean that there isn't uh, work that can be done, and um, we have the door open to, to have youth um, feedback. Okay. Uh, projects, I'm looking at my time, I want to make sure. Um, the project, so who can we serve? That's oftentimes a big point of contention, right? So is this like every other HUD program where we can't serve anybody? So here is on the left box, yes, we can. Um, youth need to be under the age of 25. Now that doesn't mean if they turn 25 during the project, they're not being kicked to the curb, but the target population is, is certainly the under 25. Um, they can be pregnant or parenting, um, or they can be unaccompanied. Um, they do need to meet one of the HUD categories. So one, two, and four. Um, and then three is kind of this squishy one that you have to get HUD approval for. We don't have HUD approval, however, um, I strongly recommend that we don't use one, two, and four as a barrier to access for youth, because oftentimes when we actually hear the story, we can find a box that is that, that we can check under category one, two, and four. There's an entire very lengthy presentation I could do about the homeless definition and all the nuances of one, two, and four. So this is just like a very quick summary. Um, and then as we, as I mentioned, if we, if we're going to have homelessness, then let's make sure it doesn't happen a lot and it's very brief and, and, and doesn't happen again. So being, if that's your goal, then we really tried to have projects that could meet some of those goals. So to make it rare, you need to have front door services or front porch services, things like outreach, diversion, and the navigation program. If you want it to be brief, then you need to invest in some crisis services. So crisis housing, which can include transitional, and then kinship care, which is the idea, as opposed to host homes, where a young person might identify a safe adult as being their family, even though legally they aren't. Um, kinship doesn't really care about that. It's not about the legal connection. It's about whether or not this adult um, 
is a safe person for them to be with. And if so, then we can provide some, some compensation for the household for some of the expenses. And then one time means investing in housing programs for those youth that have more barriers um, and need more assistance. So there's a variety of different housing options available. All right, so who got what? Um, on the left side are the housing projects, on the right side are the non-housing projects. So Kenosha got a housing project, Salvation Army of St. Croix um, is doing a housing project, a big one, um, in all the counties that are rural north. So that's like Burnett, Washburn, Clark, Taylor, Sawyer, and then West Central, which is Polk, Pepin, Pierce, Barron, all of those counties except Chippewa. Chippewa joined Eau Claire in in their project and they didn't do a housing project, you'll see there on the right side. Um, on the left side for the housing projects, Waukesha, Ozaki and Washington banded together and there is one housing project that will cover all of that area. And then um, central Wisconsin has a housing project that's in kind of that central area, which is like Dodge, Columbia, Adams, et cetera. And then Echo is partnering with project 1649 to cover Rock and Walworth. So those are going to be our housing projects, again, started 12 days ago. On the right side is the non-housing projects, the outreach, the navigation, et cetera, um, in those communities. So Brown, Eau Claire, La Crosse, um, Northeast Enwish is like everything north um, <laughs> except uh, Superior. So they're doing mobile outreach. So they're buying an RV and they're going to engage in some mobile outreach services. And then looking at the time, system navigator. So this is a little bit more information about the system navigator. We, the Balance State, are contracting with agencies um, to hire somebody to be the system navigator. Not a housing navigator, but a system navigator. Meaning somebody that can be the point of contact to help young people navigate the complex systems that we've created, right? So anything from education, law enforcement, juvenile justice, foster care, um, your mainstream benefits, uh, social service providers. Sometimes it's about walking with them figuratively or literally to make appointments, to follow up with appointments, to make phone calls, to to un explain what just happened during a meeting. And we know that homeless liaisons can only do so much. And that is, I mean, currently in our homeless service system, you guys play this like really amazing role where you can help support those youth during the school day, um, but you're also supporting 300, 400 kids. So the system navigator or the, yeah, the system navigator in this situation, the goal is, is to build relationships with the other systems and then bring up those barriers to us so that we can help uh, remove them. So we can work at a big and system level to help make things easier for youth to navigate, not only the system, but then hopefully find uh, permanent housing solutions, whether it's for themselves or as part of our um, housing projects. Uh, system navigators. So here's all the agencies we're contracting with. Um, some of them are new to us, like Eau Claire County Human Services, Boys and Girls Club of Portage County, uh, the Youth and Family Project in Washington. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are new um, subrecipients for us, but nonetheless, and you can see uh, the who and where they're going to cover. That also started 12 days ago. And then this is my uh, fun slide, which says there are so many ways that we can partner together. You can just pick a box and we can work with that. So there's the big and systemy stuff at the COC level. There's getting involved at the local coalition level. There's data sharing stuff. And then there's always coordinated entry, which is the ability to make referrals into our system without making youth bounce all over the place and talk to certain people, but rather do the referral yourself um, and be able to support them through that process. <clears throat> All right, that was a boat ton of words, um, as fast as I humanly could. And so I don't know, um, Christine, if there are questions or if there's anything else you want me to dig into or mention. Um, DPI did sign a letter of support for the plan and um, has supported the effort um, to do this big giant lift. So 
Um, we're excited about furthering that partnership <clears throat> as we go down this road. There are not questions in the chat, but we have a couple minutes if anyone does have a question for Carrie or Lee. Go ahead and type it in the chat or unmute yourself. <clears throat> Again, I know it was a, a, a ton of words um, and really fast, but I wanted what we wanted to do is make sure that everybody that joined this morning at least had heard about it, that knew it was a thing, and that um, and welcome you to participate in whatever way you can, because this isn't going to, we're not going to be able to end youth homelessness unless we have all of the participants and all the systems working together to do it. Um, and we learned that pretty quickly through the YHDP process about from the youth perspective, what they believe they needed. I mean, going into it really thought there'd be a lot more housing projects. And, and one of the things that kept coming back is, is something like a, a system navigator, not that they used all those words, but that's basically what they were describing. Um, to have somebody available to help. Um, those system navigators will also be helping to support the local coalition, YABS. So um, a couple of ours have, have kind of slowed down or dropped off a little bit. Um, and so hoping to build that back up. So whether you want to be involved in another way or just maybe a mechanism to, to help recruit and share this information, with your youth, <clears throat> you know, we're open to all of it. Lee, I don't know if I missed anything that you want to pipe in or highlight. No, I think you did a great job. Um, yeah, like I don't really have anything to add. <laughs> Well, definitely, if you want to get involved or you have ideas of youth that you would like to, you know, recommend that they join these boards and your local coalitions, definitely get in touch with Carrie or Lee. Um, again, we just wanted this to be a time where you at least heard about it, knew where, um, where the project was running in the different local coalitions. Um, and if it's near you, any way you can get involved. As Carrie mentioned, on our next lunchtime live for um, homeless liaisons and anyone else working with um, homeless youth in districts, um, which is next week, uh, they're going to be joining us again for a little while to talk a little more about it there as well. Yeah, I think the only other thing I wanted to plug is that if you're on this call and you're from the Madison area, um, they also were selected as a community and they also have a YHDP program. Um, they're in a little bit different place than we are, but they went through the same process, um, submitted a plan, have projects, et cetera. So if you're in Madison, you're like, this isn't me. It actually is. I just can't speak for Tori and how they are structuring um, recruitment or engagement in that way. But I would strongly encourage you to reach out to them if you're interested in being involved. All right, there's not questions right now, and that's okay. All of you have um, Carrie and Lee's contact information, so definitely get in touch with them. And I just want to thank Carrie and Lee for being with us this morning. Thank you so much for sharing the information. We really appreciate hearing from you today. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.